This is my cat, Albert. Albert and I are living in a democracy. Any idea of what that means, Albert? In a democracy, elections are organized on a regular basis. Several candidates run for office, people vote, and based on the expressed votes, a winner is determined, becoming the new head of state. The process is rather straightforward, and it often seems that the organization of an election is first and foremost a logistical issue especially for countries with tens of millions of inhabitants and poor infrastructure. But while these logistical problems can be solved, many people are unaware that the determination of a winner based on the express votes is actually not always possible. Albert does not understand. Assuming that we have no ties, the winner of an election is easy to determine. It's the one with the most votes. Unfortunately, Albert, the winner you get this way might actually poorly match the voters' expectations. Let's take an example. Let us imagine that you, Albert, are running for office. Your opponents are Emily, Oscar, Marine, and Max. 10,000 voters express the preferences, and after each vote has been taken into account, we realize that the 10,000 voters can be in fact classified in six possibilities only. About 3,000 voters picked you as their first choice, Marine as their second choice, Max as third, Oscar as fourth, and Emily as fifth. About 2,000 voters decided to pick Emily as their first choice, Max as second, etc. In order to determine the winner, your suggestion is to look at the first choices only, while ignoring the rest of the table. This is a common winner-take-all voting system. With 3,273 votes, your opponents are crushed. Emily received about 2,000 votes only, as well as Oscar and Marine, while Max got 727 plus 364, that is 1,091 votes. But do you really deserve to win, Albert? After all, most voters didn't pick you as their first choice. In fact, you're the last choice of each of these 6,727 voters. Emily wants a recount using the voting system from France. In this voting system, there are two rounds. During the first round, the best two candidates are picked, that is, Albert and Emily. During the second round, the voters who didn't vote for Albert or Emily must now pick one of the two. None of them are agreeing with you, Albert, so they choose Emily. She therefore wins the election with ease. Emily says this is a fair result, but Albert and the other cats disagree. One of them, Oscar, wants us to take a look at another voting system, where one candidate is eliminated at each round until there is only one left. The system makes sense. It reflects the fact that the average voter tends to eliminate candidates more than he actually picks one. It's the first round. We only look at rank one votes. The loser is then Max, with about 1,000 votes only. Max is gone. We must change the grid accordingly. What are the voters, having picked Albert as first choice, going to do? Nothing really changes for them. We just need to make Oscar the third choice instead of the fourth choice, while Emily becomes their fourth choice instead of the fifth choice. The same reasoning applies to the voters in row two. Albert becomes now their fourth choice, Oscar their third choice, and Marine their second choice. Needless to say, Emily remains their first choice. On to the second round. With not enough rank one votes, Marine is the next one to be eliminated. The 3,000 voters having picked Albert as the first choice now make Emily their third choice and Oscar the second choice. The voters in line two of the table now make Albert their third choice and Oscar their second choice. Let's also take a look at line four. We see that Oscar becomes the first choice while Emily becomes the second and Albert the third. We are now at the penultimate round and with not enough rank one votes, Emily is defeated. Voters from lines two to six make Albert their second choice, while Oscar becomes the first choice. Unfortunately for you, Albert, it means that Oscar gets elected during the fourth and last round with 6,727 rank one votes. Not convinced by this last outcome, Albert? Let's take a look at the voting system developed in 1770 by the mathematician Jean-Charles de Borda. In this system, each voter gives five points to his first choice, four points to his second choice, three points to the third choice, etc. The candidate with the most points wins the election. With this system, the total number of points of each candidate are the following, and Marine can be seen as having won the election. Let's check the points of Marine using the grid. We do 3,273 times 4 plus 2,182 times 3 plus 1,818 times 2 plus 1,636 times 5 plus 727 times 3 plus 364 times 3, leading us to a total of 34,727 points. Finally, let's try the voting system developed by the mathematician Nicolas de Condorcet. This time, each candidate must face the others one by one, and the candidate with the most victories is said to have won the election. With this last system, Max crushes Albert. He's indeed favored by about 6,000 voters among 10,000. He also crushes Emily with 3,273 plus 1,636 plus 727 plus 364. That is 6,000 votes. Oscar is also defeated. About 6,000 voters prefer Max. Finally, Marine is also eliminated since she has an insufficient number of votes when facing Max. In the voting system developed by Nicolas de Condorcet, Max is clearly the winner. Let's summarize. We already have five different ways of determining a winner, and each approach, using the same data, leads to a different outcome. We are thus truly stuck, without a real solution to the problem, 
which challenges the whole concept of an election. What to do then? One answer some people give is to pick the winner at random from among voters. While this might sound ridiculous, the idea is far from new, and according to the supporters, would solve many problems. In any case, let's not lose sight of what really matters here. Moving forward with an open and free society in which we can all safely live without being discriminated against for being different or thinking differently. This video is already the fourth video featuring Albert and his friends. Do you wish to support us? Share this video, subscribe to our channel, and follow us on Facebook or Twitter. See you soon.